Hello everyone and welcome to the 805 Focus. I'm Christine Davis. For years, people have been aware of the healing effects of animals on children and adults with special needs. One group here in Santa Barbara is working with horses and seeing amazing results. Here to share their story today is Devon Saichi. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Sue Jackson, thanks for joining us. And Bruce Bennett, Thank thanks for, for coming us. along. All right, we've got a great group of people here doing some great work. So firstly, Devon, tell us about your organization and what you do. Well, our organization is called Hearts Therapeutic Equestrian Center. And Hearts is a um, form of equine therapy. And what we do is we use horses um, as a, a modality of physical, emotional, and psychosocial therapy. And the horses are wonderful in that they, they serve children and adults physically, emotionally, and socially um, by strengthening them, strengthening muscles, um, strengthening them emotionally. And we have children and adults who oftentimes have PTSD, such as our veterans. And um, we also have children who suffer from disabilities such as ADD, ADHD. And um, horses are an amazing healing form of therapy in that they, they can help riders, they stimulate riders' uh, blood flow and um, all their vital organs and it helps them focus. I was just about to say that um, obviously horses are beautiful, wonderful creatures, but for some people it's hard to imagine, okay, how can a horse be actually healing and therapeutic mm -hmm. to someone that potentially has very serious issues? Right, well the actual science behind it is that the, the horse's gait is the closest gait to the human movement. Um, Horses move in a very uh, three-dimensional, unique rhythmic movement that um, simulates the human human gait. Um, so while the horses move front and back, side to side, up and down, it is uh, constantly shifting the rider's weight on top of the horse, and it's shifting them front and back, left to right, mm -hmm. up and down. And um, this not only stimulates uh, muscles deep inside the rider that can't be accessed via any, um, any typical physical therapy, but it also stimulates, like I said, blood flow, um, vital organs, and, um, and not only that, but horses are an amazing uh, mirror into our souls, so to speak, and they can really read us, and there's a beautiful connection between horses and riders. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And Sue, I believe you're one of the riders there. Tell us a little bit about your story. I believe you had a, a tragic accident that caused you to be in a situation that led you to Hearts Therapeutic Equestrian Center. Tell me firstly about what happened in the accident. I had been retired for a year and uh, then had a hiking accident which resulted with a broken neck and a diagnosis of incomplete tetraplegia. And at first I thought it was a, a terrible thing, but so many positive things have come out of that. Uh, Cottage Rehabilitation Hospital referred me to Hearts Therapeutic almost five years ago. It's been the closest I come when I'm on a horse, to feeling physically competent and independent again, to feeling the joy of movement in a way that I can't with canes or a walker or a wheelchair on the ground. Wow. It's an opportunity to realize that this amazing animal is trying to help me stay on board by how they move to counter my lack of balance. It's helped my coordination. It's helped my uh, sense of physical well-being. It brings me joy. The last three or four days, I really need to ride twice a week to get through the whole week with joy. 
Hey, um, hey, joy is a very good thing. If she gets three to four day, days out of it, that's, that's true. pretty wa wonderful. That's <laughs> and the volunteers make it possible for those of us that have a disability to be able to do this. The horses are, are the heroes. And all of the staff, the instructors are amazing. For instance, Devin has been my instructor recently. And she can see the details going on with my body to help me learn to correct those and be aware of them so that I can become a more proficient writer that I don't even have an awareness they're going on. Where's my left foot? Where's my shoulder? Where are my mm. hands? Where's my, my head? So I, I feel very, very lucky to have found hearts. And that happened because Cottage Rehabilitation Hospital referred me there, a woman by the name of Renee Van Horn, who worked with me when I first came to Cottage when I was injured, thought that Hearts would be a good resource for me. And I was scared and resistant. I'd already had a major fall of 90 feet. I really didn't want to have a fall off a horse. I couldn't fathom how I would be able to stay on a horse. And. Um, but I trusted her because I had learned that she knew what I could do what and, and what I potentially might be able to do. So she directed me to hearts and I fell in love. I came to trust the, the volunteers, the staff, um, and the most wonderful part about being around horses is you get to touch them, you get to smell them, they blow warm, wet, snot on you sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, look at you with these wide astonished eyes and they yawn at you and uh, ignore you and I've been taught to do some grooming and some tacking which just made me feel even more independent and competent. Um, I go there, I'm this, this different person. I can walk better, I uh, can stand with more balance, I'm more coordinated. And I get back in the car and go home, and I, I drop the first thing I pick up. So it's an amazing sense of fostering the independence of somebody who's disabled to an extent they didn't realize was possible for them. That's the mentality of the volunteers, of the staff, and it seems to be the mentality of the darn horses, too. Really? So it's been a wonderful resource for me. I'm very grateful to Hearts. That's fantastic. Uh, I just wanted to go back just briefly for those who aren't familiar with the term tetraplegic. Mm -hmm. Could you just explain what that is? We know you had a broken back. Mm -hmm. What does tetraplegic mean as opposed to quadriplegic, paraplegic? Okay. I had a broken neck and uh, you're familiar with the, someone who has paraplegia, someone who has quadriplegia. Uh, tetraplegia means that all four limbs, both arms, both legs, and the spinal column are involved. Mm. My diagnosis of incomplete means I was incredibly lucky. And initially, when I had two uh, neck surgeries and came into cottage, I was told I wouldn't walk, that I would be a quadriplegic in a wheelchair with a joystick the rest of my life. But the physical therapist, the occupational therapist and the recreational therapist, uh, boy, I tell you, they, uh, along with the nursing staff and all of the aides, they do everything they can to bring out in your body what might be there residually, even the tiniest bit, and build on it and, and encourage you to believe that you can bring whatever is possible back. So tetraplegia means that both arms, both legs and the spinal column are involved in some degree of um, plegia, which means inability to have sensation or movement. Um, I get contractures, I get spasticity, and those are lessened riding a horse. It's, it's uh, magical what happens with this movement of going forward and at the same time you're going sideways and at the same time you're on a diagonal and uh, it's just unbelievable what responsiveness my body has had in five years to being able to, to have exposure to a horse and I've made progress. When I first got on there was a volunteer on my left 
with their hand on my thigh, a volunteer on the right with the hand on my thigh, a volunteer leading the horse with a lead rope and the instructor. And then there was one petrified little person on top going, what have I done? <laughs> and now I can, I'm learning to trot um, independently. I go out on the trail with my instructor. I ride independently with a, a volunteer at the shoulder of the horse and my instructor. And it is joyous. It is an amazing feeling of being competent and physically able. And uh, I would ride seven days a week. So they're all open six, but I would <laughs> ride six if I could. Well, so that's, that's wonderful to hear how much it's helped you and empowered you. Definitely. Bruce, <coughs> tell me a little bit about your story. You have a fascinating story. Um, my story is that I went into the Marine Corps right after high school. Um, and uh, I was sent, uh, about a year later, I was sent to Vietnam. Um, and uh, we were working a perimeter. Uh, and it was an old army base or an army camp out. Um, so there were foxholes and different things around, but it was flat and cleared. Um, we just finished eating dinner. It was just about dusk, and uh, Viet Cong started to mortar the encampment, and they had it pretty well pinpointed, and they walked mortars right down the center. And of course, everybody dove for foxholes or whatever they could find. So this was the enemy attacking? Yes. Yes, um, and uh, I dove into a foxhole, kind of got into the fetal position, um, closed my eyes, did a little praying, uh, and a mortar went off in a tree above me. Mm. And what it did was um, I had shrapnel in the leg, and at the same time what it did was push the waist down and it splintered a disc in my back. Uh. So I was medevaced out, um, had surgery in my back, uh, was medically discharged. And, uh, and I believe you received a Purple Heart. I did. I did for my injuries. That's um, combat wounded. Yeah, that, that's pretty amazing stuff. Now from you. there, you had, you had five back surgeries along the way. Yes. And I believe you had some tough times when you came back from Vietnam. It was, it was kind of rough. Um, Give me a little summary of those years before you found hearts. Uh, Vietnam vets were not really welcomed back. Um, so it was kind of tough adjusting to civilian life. Um, I didn't think there was anything wrong, although, um, as I later learned, I was using alcohol to suppress the feelings, um, and uh, I had a, a feeling of, of anger, um, of anxiety, depression. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that all kind of came with the territory. and. As far as I was concerned, there really wasn't anything wrong. Yeah, I drank a little too much once in a while, but, you know, kids do that. Mm. So um, I really didn't realize that I had a problem and, until I came to Hearts, and that was after several years of drinking and three marriages that went bad. And, three, wow. Um, and I never correlated anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, approximately a month before I went to went to Hearts, I was diagnosed with PTSD. And how long before? About a month before about I went to, month to before. Hearts. Yeah. And of course, all that time that you were drinking and suffering, you had PTSD. It hadn't been diagnosed, it wasn't being helped. And here you find 
find hearts. And I believe it was a friend that recommended it yes. because yes. you were involved in horses growing up. In yes, I rode when I, was, right. when I was younger in high school and so on. So. And they said, go along. This is a great place. Mm -hmm. Check it out and see if you like, you know, go there and have a ride and see how it feels. See how it, how it does. Um, and it was literally magical. Um, I drove onto the property for the first for the first time, and all I saw was horses and people walk, walking around and lessons going on and trees and bushes and and that was it. I couldn't see the city, couldn't see any buildings. Um, it was just an open area with all those things going on, and there was just kind of an immediate sigh of relief or um, calming down wow. as I came on. And uh, so I was kind of in a off mood. I didn't know if I really wanted to be there. Um, I was, of course, tired of being at home. I'd retired about three months before. And, um, so I came out to Hearts, and uh, the instructor said, would you go get this particular horse and bring her out, and we're going to get her ready for a ride? And I said, sure. And before this, they were doing that for you? Actually, no, I'd, I'd, had, that, I'd had that training before, right. so I knew how to put a halter on and lead, lead the right. horse. Um, and I walked into the stall. I closed the gate, I walked up to the horse, and she, um, as Devon said, horses can read people, and she read me. And she walked up to me and she put her muzzle over my shoulder oh. and pulled me in, oh. and held me for about five seconds before she let go. Oh, that's amazing. And I was hooked. That was just, I mean, it just, my heart just went boom. Um, and I knew at that point that's where I was supposed to be. And uh, what so a touching, touching story! And I bet you, yeah. you have quite a few stories like that. Oh, we Devin. have a plethora of those beautiful stories. Yeah, that's what that's what they do. That's what it our horses do. For people who can't imagine, you know, the sort of interaction between the two, that to s to see or to feel to experience a horse saying, "Come on." I'm here for you, and bringing you in yeah. is just is just magic. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Devin, tell me some about some of the work that you do with children. Well, um, you know, Heart serves a varying degree of uh, disabilities, people with disabilities. We have, um, once again, children with um, emotional, social, physical, cognitive disabilities. Um, we serve the whole gamut. Um, so some of our children come in with um, ADD, ADHD, and they have difficulty focusing or putting together um, a sequencing tasks. So things that our instructors would do is um, when, th when the young riders are mounted, they would put together a series of games, um, something like, you know, reach into this bucket and, um, you know, grab, grab a, a colored bean bag and walk down to the end of the arena and I'd like you to pick the hula hoop that matches the color of your bean bag and I'd like you to place your bean bag inside that hula hoop. So this is a series of tasks that the rider then has to remember and put together and um, execute correctly. And, and in doing so, the, the horse's movement is um, not only strengthening the rider physically, um, but again, it's stimulating the horse, the, the rider, and um, riders using this example again with ADD, ADHD, um, they often seek self-stimulation, and the horse's movement takes place of that self-stimulation, mm -hmm. therefore allowing the rider to then focus on that sequencing task at hand. Um, so that's just a small example. Um, yeah, that's that. That's amazing how how that how that all works. Knowing of um, 
some of the struggles that the mm -hmm. children with some of these illnesses have yeah. to have an animal be helping them in a way that they're enjoying the therapy work and they're not mm -hmm. feeling like it's actually a job and, and you know a, a hassle having to go to therapy it's right. like i'm going to see the horses it's know. rather unorthodox but it's highly effective mm. yeah. now there was one particular little girl you were telling me about mm -hmm. tell me about her there's a beautiful little girl that rides at hearts who has been riding at hearts for several years now since she was um old enough to get on a horse and she has been diagnosed with Rett syndrome and um, Rett syndrome is a uh, genetic mutation and it affects the uh, fine motor skills of riders and the coordination and balance of riders and um, of, of individuals and it's um, only found in young girls mm -hmm. and it's um, along the scale of um, severe it's on the autism spectrum and um, it comes out in many forms of um, hyper hypotonia so low muscle tone and again it affects the coordination of riders so this beautiful little girl Miss Sorrell um, she is nonverbal and she has very low muscle tone and low coordination and nonverbal I mean, it is what it says, but mm -hmm. it's, she doesn't speak at all. She doesn't speak. She's not, an, uh, she's not able to say, I am off balance, I'm not comfortable, I'm hungry. She speaks um, directly via eye contact and, um, and through sound. She has these very unique sounds that um, <clears throat> is her form of communication. Um, and so on, while she's on this horse, she's not in, she has very low... Again, low muscle tone, so the horse's movement is used to strengthen her. Um, again, the horse's movement is constantly shifting her off balance, and that translates into the rider's pelvis and their core and their spine. And the rider, because they're being shifted off balance, they then have to rebalance themselves. And that act in itself is strengthening their core. And um, so Miss Sorrell has such a beautiful personality she's always smiling and she wears these beautiful sunglasses that mm -hmm. um, you know because again she isn't able to um, she Expr isn't able to express the sun is in my eyes and I'm uncomfortable um, mm. so she's always happy when she comes she's and her parents are beautiful beautiful people they're wonderful mm. and very supportive and what sort of positive changes have they seen and you seen in her since she's been with Hearts? Um, you know, Sorrel sometimes has some off days where she's not as strong. Um, she also oftentimes likes to play games with us and, and she tries to catch us when in the off chance that we're not looking and she tries to tip towards one side and, um, and she you know expects us to catch her, which we do. Um, you know, Sorrel, when she, f I didn't know her when she first came there. I think Bruce had the fortune of volunteering with her. Um, but I have seen her grow and develop into a beautiful young lady, and um, she's gotten significantly stronger. She can sit up taller. She can um, support her own weight. There was a time when she wasn't able to. Um, and um, her, her, form of communication has developed a little slight more. She's developed these relationships with our volunteers and the rider, the instructors, and the horse as well. So she's, um, she's growing and progressing in her own very unique way. That's great. Mm -hmm. Now, Bruce, you started off as a rider, and now you're a rider and a volunteer. As a volunteer, what sort of work do you do? Uh, volunteering uh, includes getting the horses ready, grooming them, uh, cleaning feet, getting them brushed down, uh, getting the saddles on, the bridles on, um, and then uh, there are uh, a couple of other duties that volunteers do. Um, they lead the horse in the arena. Uh, as Sue was saying, she had a leader and someone on, a, on either side of her, mm -hmm. which are sidewalkers. And they're responsible 
for the writer and only the writer and their safety. And the leader is, is responsible for the horse, its actions, and the safety of the rider by movement of the horse. And I believe you also do quite a bit of speaking, raising awareness of, of horse therapy and particularly Hearts Therapeutic Center. I've had that honor, yes, a few times, and it's, it's been very enjoyable. Um, I've been able to kind of tell my story Mm -hmm. um, and as a volunteer, you know, the, you, you get a child who is, um, like Devin was saying, has no core strength or muscle strength, and to see them build that up, and then taking the horse from a walk into a trot and listening to the deep belly laugh of a child who just now got to trot. Mm -hmm. And it's the most satisfying feeling that you can get as a volunteer, whether you're sidewalking or leading, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, I'm sure the instructors feel the same way. It's wow. just, it's so rewarding. And um, so I've been, I've been fortunate enough to be able to speak on those terms and, and in those venues, and that's I've really enjoyed it. That's wonderful. Very enjoyed it. Um, Sue, as someone who is getting some great results, please give us a brief message to people who are, have special needs and have heard your story. What's Come, on? smell a horse, touch a horse, ride a horse, fall in love. Come. <laughs> 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 Wonderful. Devin, is there something the community can do to help you guys? Absolutely. You know, um, we, we are not able to provide this service without our horses, without our volunteers, and without our amazing riders. Um, and of course, without our very generous, benevolent donors. Um, you know, so we, we definitely need we're, all, we're always looking for people who are equally passionate about what we do, um, who want to come and serve either as being a volunteer or, um, you know, we have in people who are interested in becoming instructors who would like to, just like me, teach therapeutic writing. Um, donations, I believe, donations are also always welcome. Donations, always welcome. You know. Now, for people that are wanting to donate or learn more about the organization, what's mm -hmm. the website? The website is www.hearts, plural, heartsriding.org. Again, www.heartsriding.org. Well, thank you very much to all three of you. This has been a fascinating discussion. I thank am you, excited to come along and, and visit, yeah. visit the center. It just sounds wonderful. Please do. Thank and you. And for all of you folks at home, if you'd like to learn more about our show, go to our website at tvsb.tv. This is the 805 Focus. I'm Christine Davis, and we hope to see you next time.